Hi, I'm Sarah Jane Dice, and you are watching me on Awesome TV. Yeah. I don't think I would have been this cool. If I was with me, then I don't think I would have been this cool. Be like, ah, please go. I'm not sure. I'm just like the girls. I'm like, ah, I should be like this, I should be like this. He has to be like this, and he has to be six feet tall and this and that. But I'm like, when I look at them, they're not taking care of their health. They're not working on their career. They're not um, working on themselves. But they want ready me back. I'm like, I see. Hello, hi, and welcome to Bollywood Gapshap with Pooja Nawathe. And today I'm in conversation with the very gorgeous, very pretty Sarah Jain Diaz. Hello, hi, and welcome to Awesome TV. Hi, Pooja. You're very pretty yourself. I love your yellow top. Oh, thank you so much. And you're giving me a peaceful vibe. <laughs> Why? Oh, thank you. <laughs> my Shanti vibe. White, white Shanti vibe. Shanti vibe. White is my favorite color. But talking about peace, love, and everything, you have been garnering love and praises for your role uh, in Made in Heaven, and I personally yeah. loved it, especially the monologue, Tara. I mean, it it is it is so relatable. And post thirties, mm-hmm. when you are single and when you uh, unable to you know figure out things on your own and you're not able to find that Mister Right for yourself, that monologue yeah. hits you so hard. It's like. You're yeah. so carefree, but at the same time, so empathetic to your own soul. Tell me about it. I think that Joya was very clear about what she wanted, and so we had had many conversations about it. And I love working with directors like that because you know it makes your life so much easier when your director is giving you clarity. And um, Joya said a few things, but she also gave me the space to interpret. the lines the way i wanted to so it was a lovely mix of things and i think that when i read it it was very it's like you said i was not only did i feel like i resonated with the lines i also knew a lot of women in my life who were over 30 and single and had been through similar situations not in the sense had been left at the altar but just sort of you know trying to navigate life on their own which is Not easy as a woman. Um, it's not easy as a human being because because there's equal amounts of pressure also on men. Um, you know, coming from a society where people used to get married in their twenties, um, and people are just choosing self love above all else. And what I liked about my portrayal of Julie, sorry, is that when she's talking about it, she's not doing a poor me. I'm so I'm an abla nari. I've gotten stuck alone. It's not that. It's that. you know it's very empowering because she says that we love each other i i don't want to come in the way of what he wants to achieve from his life i don't want to come in the way of myself achieving what i want from my life so we are going our separate ways we're choosing to love each other and finding sort of happiness in that and that's fine that does not mean and and i also love that it's open ended because that does not mean that it's not an ending you know usually when people are like oh he left or she left it's like the end of the world But that's not the case with yeah. this portrayal, um, and that's what I loved about it. I love the fact that the interpretation and the perception that has been shown through this story is so out of the box. Like nobody would think of it, you know. If your husband, if your partner uh, leaves you at the altar, and then you are choosing yourself beyond everything. No, it's not cool. No, it's not. हाँ मैं जस्ट बता रही हूँ अभी मैं इतनी कूल नहीं होती अगर ऐसे अगर मेरे साथ ऐसे होता तो आई डोंट थिंक आई वुड दिस कूल भी लाइक आप ही जाए लाइक यू नो बट आई वाज कूल बिकॉज अगेन आई वाज लाइक ओ व्हेन आई रेड द लाइंस आई वाज लाइक ओ व्हेन आई रेड द एपिसोड आई वाज लाइक ओ ओके यू कैन यू देयर इज ऑलवेज अ सिल्वर लाइन देयर इज अ वे टू मेक एनी अनहैप्पी सिचुएशन देयर इज देयर इज अ वे टू लुक एट इट द परसेप्शन दैट काउंट्स राइट अम so the way julie perceives roman predicament is beautiful she could have seen it as how dare you do this to me on my wedding day you know what i mean she could have done that but she didn't she was just like okay i love you i love me and i don't want to stop you from doing something that you love because you're so talented it would be ridiculous for you to waste this talent simply because you know you're having a baby that i know you're not ready to have so it um it's hard it's hard it's not something that is is is, is very easy mai aise nahi keh sakti ki ha mai sabse sabko aise karni chahiye but uh, having said that if i were to be in that place i would have cried rivers i am not that yeah. strong, but uh, julie somewhere empowered us all the 
souls who are scared. I yeah, I like that. I'm like that in real life now. I never used to be like that when I was younger, but I'm like that now. I mean, I've been in relationship where I have always sort of victimized myself and been like, oh no, look what he's doing to me, and he's not marrying me, or you know, whatever. But now I have an I have a very different understanding about relationships, and I think that's what it's about. Right? It's about your perception. It's about evolving. It's about um really knowing who you are what you stand for and also respecting the other person because i also i feel hum ye bahut karte na ye toxic masculinity masculinity is very easy to mail back which i don't i don't agree with that at all it's very easy to point fingers at the other person uh, be it man or woman and say it's their fault but people do not take responsibility for themselves ke aise kya main main aapko rehe sunti hu ladkiyon se ha mujhe aisa ladka chahiye aisa ladka chahiye he has to be like this and he has to be thick thick tall and this and that but i'm like when i look at them they're not taking care of their health they're not working on their career they're not uh, working on themselves but they want ready me back i'm like aise ki kaise what is this it's a two way thing right both have to work on um yourself and then you come together and then you work on a life together um but yeah story out there but just yeah. you know apne kaha if it would have happened with you again so i just want to ask you sara agar aapko koi mandap mein chhod ke jata hai to sara kya karegi see it really depends on the reason it really depends on the reason in roman's case right um he was he had a panic attack hmm but he wanted to go through with it anyway he didn't leave you have to understand people are people people shouldn't understand in the episode hmm. roman does not leave julie he tells him to leave they decide together they have a conversation yeah. to me that if someone did not give me that i would never speak to them again i would never have anything to do with them and i would really break down like if someone just without saying anything just left yeah that would be unacceptable to me that would be unacceptable completely Absolutely. and i would never want to see that face again now talking apart from made in heaven you know you have been doing a lot of good projects the freelancer and what's in the pipeline so i have um mm, got so much um, so wow. grateful i signed two shows immediately after made in heaven came out um so i'm starting to shoot for a fiction project uh, next week and i just finished the documentary which i also signed after um made in heaven came out it's my second documentary for national geographic and i love working with them um and i again feel very privileged and blessed to be able to do another one with them so that i shot for i'm also working on season 2 of the sarah jane show which is the my award winning podcast um and i also just had my song which i sang called in your eyes got signed by a a uh, european record label so that being by cracking records so that's being released um it's a remix so it's an electronic song i'm very excited about that as well is that that so it's it's been back to back dream come true miraculous moments and i'm really overwhelmed and really grateful and you know i i my favorite quote to describe this feeling is an overnight success is a result of years of hard work that got me to where i am today so i'm very grateful i feel like i'm forgetting there's something else that i have to tell you oh i have two films coming out yes Sorry. They're both web releases. As of now, they're both web releases. I can't really give you much details, but all I can tell you is that one is a. I'm playing a cop in one, so I'm in full cop uniform. I'm damn excited. And the other one is a interesting genre. It's a murder mystery. Oh my yeah. god! So different yeah. shades of Sarah. Uh, we could get to see, and there's a lot in the store, and we are so. Fifty fifty shades. Fifty shades of Sarah Jane. <laughs> oh, wow! Wonderful. But Sarah, you know, like you said, it's the hard work that pays you off eventually, and people feel that it's a cakewalk uh, when they continuously see different different projects, maybe music videos, your podcast, and people think, "Wow, she's getting a lot of work." But the struggle is real. Can you shed some light uh, on the struggles that you have been through? I always like to start by acknowledging that the struggle is real for everybody in every. absolutely part of life in every career because i think it's important for people to always hear that from celebrities in particular um because they feel that is ah unko kya hota hoga like you know what i mean it's like this very odd way, way of looking at celebrities um but i think that everybody's struggle is real um i think for me personally the last four years have been very difficult i lost my dad 
just before the pandemic um oh. and it happened suddenly um yeah i haven't i haven't been able to speak about it till today actually i ne- i didn't make a public announcement i didn't post on instagram or anything but i'm finally ready to talk about it um so i lost him 4 years ago it happened suddenly it was awful i was in another country when it happened i can't talk too much about it but anyway so that happened and immediately after that the early i got diagnosed with depression and anxiety which again was very very hard and it had nothing to do with my career it just had you know i don't know it could have been because of my dad died it could have been because i had depression and anxiety all my life and i didn't realize but these are all things that i feel like i they've been hard it these have been my struggles but i try not to use that word like i try i very rarely will say I'm struggling. I try not to use that word. Like if I use that word it'll only be with some with one person or two people who are really close to me who really know how difficult it's been for me every single day battling, you know, anxiety, battling depression. Um that's been hard. It's been hard because there are many days when I just like I wake up and I start crying. Like it's just awful. Like it I'm a mess and then I have to pick myself up and then, you know, whatever it is I need to do. Um and people really really underestimate the importance and the impact of mental illness mm-hmm. i feel like when you have a physical illness people take it very seriously but like a mental illness is not taken seriously at all um and i don't know why that is there are more people with depression and anxiety especially post pandemic because it's also one of the symptoms of long covid because covid affects sleep sleep affects mental health it's just this endless cycle of things and i feel like now more than ever people just need to be empathetic towards people who are genuinely have depression and anxiety or maybe be aware of some someone is showing signs but also on the other side is people not to take it for granted like just be like oh i have depression i have anxiety you know it's not a joke yeah. it's really not a joke i've been at a um, spot where you know mental health was being taken that seriously and i feel you zara and i lost my mastery during covid so i know the kind of i'm so sorry to hear that yeah i know how it feels but then you know we sail through it you know because I feel that certainly the spirituality that we spoke about really helps you heal and more power to you Sarah uh I am really sorry you had to go through all these things but I'm sure with the project No please doing, don't be what what I thank you thank you I really appreciate that but it really only made me stronger um yes, and yes. I'm just saying that I, have I just have to finish by saying I I have to add this at the end of what I was saying about depression and anxiety the reason I was talking to you about this so seriously is because I also need people to understand that as serious as it is there's also a way to heal and there's also a way to live with it right it's like something you just have to live with like sometimes like i might have to live with the fact that i will always have a tendency towards depression and anxiety and that's okay that doesn't mean i can't live a healthy healthy happy life the reason i'm saying this is because my mission in life is to ensure that nobody suffers in silence that is my mission in life is to talk about my struggles to ensure that nobody suffers in silence to understand that they are not alone and that's why i do a lot of my content on social media is about mental health and that is also why i take social media breaks because i need people to understand that it's okay it's fine if you're not posting every single day and it's also fine if you are but if you need a break it's okay to take a break i just want to say while it's really hard i am a living example that you can make it through it's possible it's possible it's very much possible uh more power to you and uh, talking about your journey in bollywood uh, your uh, career uh, what's the one breakthrough role that you are looking forward to I wouldn't say it's a breakthrough role because I feel like a number of things I've done are already breakthrough yeah. because like Angry Indian Goddesses Angry Indian Goddesses for me was a breakthrough role um Made in Heaven was a breakthrough role I think the one where I'm playing the cop is going to be a breakthrough role as well um and I can't I can't explain how excited I am for people to see it I literally like I'm like I so I went to the dub and I was like did you go through a transformation or something for this particular role when you no. were playing a cop the thing is that like the second you put Barbie on it's a transformation like it's just you know um i mean i say barbie what i mean is you know but the second is just like you're like i'm like who am i who is this person i look so bad at right now you feel now. like the bang um no it's not like the no wow how do you feel like i felt bad at i felt like i was going to kick someone's ass which i actually could do cuz i actually know how to kick ass so yeah amazing um looking forward yeah i'm very excited i'm very excited so you asked me something else you said breakthrough role and i had a train of thought and i forgotten but yes this, again i i would love to play 
I would love to play two things. One thing would be a superhero. I would love to play a superhero. Just like love to love. Um, that would be amazing. Uh, or any like serious action role, like MI2 meets Don Treaty meets you wow. know like this. Oh, I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it. Oh, like, wow. I love acting so much. Can't wait to see you stepping into those uh, roles very very soon. But Sarah, all the best, and we are excited for all the upcoming projects that you have in your kitty. Uh, before Thank we sign you. off, what would you like to tell our awesome viewers out there and share a message for your fans? To everybody watching, just remember to stay true to yourself. You are the most important thing, and if you don't take care of you, you can't take care of anybody else. Thank you. <laughs>